This video is called the Seneca Falls Convention, and in this video we'll be looking at how women first stood up for their rights and demanded that the treatment of women change. So the Seneca Falls Convention took place in Seneca Falls, New York, and it was organized by New York Quakers, which was a religious group, and the two main women that were involved in organizing the convention were Lucretia Mott and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, who you already started to look at and examine their lives a little bit more earlier this week. This was the first women's rights meeting or convention in history of the world, in any place. So it was significant to the, the birth and the start of the women's rights movement. As you can see from this sign here, um, as you enter Seneca Falls, New York today, uh, it does have a little memorial as being the birthplace of women's rights. The convention happened um, on July 19th and 20th. It was a two-day convention in the year 1848. This convention had six sessions, so they met three different during three different time slots on each of the two days. And there were a variety of topics, including um, dis women's discussions on politics, law, and even um, some comedy presentations were given over the, over the two days. You can imagine that women talking about politics and law would have been very uncommon during that time period. However, the main part of this convention was to talk about women's rights. And the attendees, the people in attendance at the convention, would uh, discuss and vote on an official document and the resolutions of the convention um, that would basically be, be saying what these women wanted um, with women's rights. So this would be the main part of the convention, would be that document that they would produce. That document was called the Declaration of Sentiments. And at the convention, it was well, before the convention, it was written by Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and then it was actually read in public by Elizabeth Cady Stanton herself. So she wrote it and read it to the convention. She, when, when Stanton wrote this Declaration of Sentiments, it was supposed to kind of capture all the rights and beliefs that women believe they should have. And for effect, Stanton used the same format as the Declaration of Independence, um, the document that the United States used to declare their freedom from England. Um, Stanton kind of used that same format to, for women declaring their freedom from men in a way. The document included uh, a preamble, just like the Declaration of Independence, and then had a big list of complaints that women had about their treatment. The main complaints included things like the right to vote, a change in divorce laws allowing women to um, have rights when they got divorced and have custody of their children, uh, a change in property laws that allowed women to continue owning their property even though um, they were married, and then also uh, a change in salary and work opportunities for women. The Declaration of Sentiments was signed by 100 people at the convention. 68 women and 32 men signed this official document of the convention. You can see here, here's the signatures. There's a, you know, they have it broken down by the, the ladies and the gentlemen that signed it. So even though women were in attendance to fight for women's rights, there was some debate at the convention over whether or not the Declaration of Sentiments and the official recommendations of the convention should include women having the right to vote. Although everyone there would have loved that for women to have the right to vote, there were some people that thought that it was going too far, that it was a, too big of a step to ask for the right to vote. Um, you see here... Um, Lucretia Mott, who believed women should have the right to vote, thought that including it in the particular document would make the convention ridiculous. Um, some thought that people would interpret the convention as a joke, and they wouldn't take it seriously if women requested the right to vote. And they, even though they would have loved it, they didn't want the, the convention to be a joke. Um, the reason people eventually supported voting at Seneca Falls was because of the work of Frederick Douglass, he was a very famous abolitionist and a speaker, almost like a, a movie star back then. Everyone, everyone would have known Frederick Douglass. He was a runaway slave. Um, and he took up the floor and argued that voting rights needed to be included. So with his support, eventually people voted for voting rights to be included in the Declaration of Sentiments at Seneca Falls. So once this convention is over, the public reaction is very mixed. Women around the country join the cause. They start these things called equal suffrage societies, basically little clubs 
that they meet and they write letters of protest to try and get um, voting rights for women. They send letters and things like that. Most of these societies are started in the north and you literally see thousands of women who otherwise wouldn't have been involved start to join in and start these protests for women's rights. However, on the flip side, the Seneca Falls, Falls Convention was bashed in the newspapers. People called it utterly ridiculous. People called it unseemly. These women were acting not like women, but more like men, and that was, that was unseemly. This, um, men especially, community leaders and preachers, were the ones that really attacked the convention. And they thought it was ridiculous that women would stand up for their rights. And they thought it was ridiculous that women would request the right to vote. So it was very controversial. Many men had a look of this on their face, the OMG face here, um, about Seneca Falls. So in the end, what does the Seneca Falls Convention really do? It's the official start of women's rights. So before this, although women have been talking about rights prior to Seneca Falls, this is the first organized meeting, and after Seneca Falls, equal suffrage societies start, and, and women's rights is now an official movement in 1848. The convention produces a document that was written by Stanton called the Declaration of Sentiments, and in that declaration you can see all of the complaints women have against society and all the things they want to see change. So that kind of becomes the guideline of the women's rights movement. The message of the convention is going to spread quickly. Many women are going to join societies, join in the cause. I shouldn't just say women, many people, because men did join as well. Um, however, there were others, men mostly, but also women, that believed that the, that the traditional way of women being subservient to men was the way it was supposed to be, and they trashed the convention publicly. An interesting little math equation here. The Declaration of Sentiments was written 70, 72 years after the Declaration of Independence. And after the Declaration of Sentiments, it would take 72 more years of fighting before women were given the right to vote.